Imagine this, you drop a quick voice note on WhatsApp or Telegram and without lifting another finger, an AI books the meeting, drafts and sends emails for you, makes calls on your behalf, saves voice and image notes and pings you a reminder. Sounds handy, right? Stick around. Over the next 10 to 15 minutes, you will understand how to build that assistant with zero code and while running on a pocket change. When we are done, you will import the templates and hit start. And if you stay till the end, I'll share the little WhatsApp loophole that lets you skip those business API fees entirely. Now let's look at the demo first. On the left hand side, I have the WhatsApp open and on the right hand side, I have the main workflow that will handle the user queries. In the year table, I have these four tables, contacts, notes, reminders, and pending calls. In the contacts, I have these four dummy contacts and all the other tables are empty. Send a voice note from WhatsApp. Hi Maya, I want you to do analysis on all the major updates from Google's 2025 developer conference and prepare a report. Then send an email and include all the research details you collected in that email and ask him to review it. And now let's send the message. Now on the right hand side, we'll see this event getting received and it is received and and since it was a voice message, so it, it took this branch. And now the agent has triggered the research agent. The research agent will search for the recent Google's announcements on Google and prepare a report. And this node is complete. And then it called the get contacts tool to get Alex's details and then it called the email agent. And finally, it is responding back and we got this message. It is saying I have prepared an email draft to Alex and this is the email it has prepared. This is just awesome with a perfect title and perfectly laid out research details. Now let's send this message. Set up a meeting with Alex tomorrow morning 9 a.m. to discuss these further. Also include the research contents in the calendar's description. And now it has received the event and this time it was a text message so it took this branch. Now it is executing the calendar agent over here and it has responded back. So it has successfully set up the meeting with all of these details and this is the calendar invite it has created. It contains all the research content and a really precise title. Now let's send it a message. I want you to save all the research data in the notes. Also call Alex and let him know that he'll need to drive the meeting with Green Estates representative tonight as Priya is out for two days. And now let's send this event. Workflow is triggering and it has triggered the notes agent first and then the make outbound call. And I have received the call. Hello, this is Maya calling on behalf of John. Hi, Maya. Hello, I have a message from John for Alex. It's regarding the meeting with Green Estates representative tonight. The message is, let Alex know that he'll need to drive the meeting with Green Estates representative tonight as Priya is out for two days. Did you understand the message? Yes, I understood the message. Okay, great. Thank you. Have a good day. Now, let's say if I came across an image like this that I want to store in my notes. So I can drag that image into the WhatsApp chat and send this image. So it has given us the summary and now we can ask it to save it in our notes. It has called the notes agent. If we go to the notes table, here we can see it has added the summary of that image in our notes. Now let's try out a couple of things from the telegram as well. Let me ask this. Can you remind me tomorrow at 10 a.m. to take my laptop charger with me before leaving for office? And the workflow received the request and it has triggered this reminder agent and it is saying I have set a reminder for you to take the laptop charger at 9.50 a.m. tomorrow. And if I go to the air table, in the reminders table, I can see that it has created a reminder. And we have another workflow that is running every five minutes and checking for any pending reminders in the next 15 minutes. For now, I'll not cover each and every feature of this assistant because that will make the video really long but I hope you got an understanding of what this agent is capable of and how you can put it to use for your work. Before we dive into the nuts and bolts, let me give you a quick aerial view of what we have built. Every conversation starts on WhatsApp or Telegram. The moment a user sends a message, it lands in our main AI agent. Think of this as the project manager. That manager holds six tools on its belt. Email, calendar, notes, reminders, research, and calls. Each tool actually lives in its own workflow with its own mini agent. So we can upgrade or swap parts without touching the rest. The email agent workflow talks to a Gmail MCP server that handles drafting, replying, anything Gmail can do. The calendar agent plugs into its own calendar MCP server for events and invites. Note taking and send reminders both use Airtable, one for storing notes and other for saving the polling reminders. The research agent taps heavily for live web searches and our call manager workflow skips an agent altogether. It simply fires a request to 11 labs to place the call. That's the high level map. With that context in mind, let's jump to the implementation. So we have all of these workflows created for this AI assistant. You can download all of these workflows from the free school community and you can find the link in the description. Once you do that, you can import all of those workflows one by one into your Anitin. If you want to get started with a free Anitin setup, you can follow this video. Now, this is the main AI agent that receives the user request, identifies the intent, and then gets all the tasks executed by the sub agents and then responds back to the user. All of these blue outline workflows are added as tools to this main AI agent. This is the workflow for MCP servers, and this is the workflow for sending you the reminders. 
it has a cron job it is set up to run every five minutes and it will check for any pending reminders in the next 15 minutes and it will send it to you now let's go through the first main ai agent workflow now to begin with this is accessible from whatsapp and telegram you can find a lot of videos on how to set up telegram let me talk about whatsapp because this is little tricky to connect whatsapp to your anyten you need to go to developers.facebook.com and click on create app give your app a name you can scroll down and click on other and select business and click on next then create app next you need to click on setup for this whatsapp product and you can select your business portfolio and now you can start using it on the left hand side you need to click on api setup now you see this one test number over here so this is what you can use you don't need to get a business number registered and added to be able to use these workflows but just make sure that you don't spam it a lot but for your regular use case, this should be good enough. In the recipient phone number, you need to add your number where you want to receive your messages. Once you add that number and select it here, then you can click on generate access token over here and it will generate an access token. Then you can click on send message over here. Once you do that, your number will receive a test message. Now you can start having conversation with that test number. Now to connect your WhatsApp API to Anyton, you need to come to this basic tab over here under app settings. Then copy app ID and app secret one by one. And in this workflow, open the WhatsApp trigger, then create a new credential and one by one paste both of those two things and save. One thing to note is that this token is short lived. It's valid only for one hour and you need to extend the validity. Now, since your application is not in live mode and your business is not approved, you can't create a permanent token, but you can create a long lived token with a validity of two months. To do that, you can generate your token from here, then copy it. Then go at the top in the tools and open access token debugger. In this debugger, you can paste your token over here, click on debug, and then you'll see a button at the bottom to extend the validity of your token. And then you can use this token in your workflows. Okay, now let's understand what's going on in this workflow. So after receiving the message from WhatsApp or Telegram, we have the first node that will identify what type of message is it. Is it an image or an audio or a text? Because all of these three different types needs to be handled differently. If it's an image sent from WhatsApp, then this is the path taken. So it will first get the image URL, then download it, and then make a call to OpenAI and extract the text out of it and summarize it. And if the message type is audio, then it will get the audio URL, download it, get it transcribed from OpenAI, and then pass it to the main AI agent. And if it's a raw text, then we'll pass the text to the main AI agent. In the edit fields, we are just saving the message that we received, the source, and the session ID. Moving forward, the main AI agent has only one responsibility. It needs to identify the user's intent, the sequence of tasks that it needs to get executed, and then invoke all the corresponding tools sequentially. We have given all the available tools to it and some additional instructions. There are some operational guidelines and uh, prerequisite checks. And finally, we have given some example interactions. So in this example, it received this as the input. User sent an audio message, and then this is the audio message that we had sent initially and it has produced the output like this after executing all the required tools. We have used GPT-40 model here for this AI agent and a simple memory, but you should replace this simple memory with your Postgres Superbase memory. You can watch any of the previous videos on to see how to set it up. And finally, we have all of these sub-agent workflows attached as tools to this manager. Apart from workflows, we have also attached the Airtable tools directly to this agent to get the contact and update a contact in the Airtable. And once these tools are executed, it will respond back on the same platform where it received the query. As you can see, it executed the get tools tool, notes agent, research agent, email agent, and calendar agent for that inquiry. Now let's go through each of these sub-agent workflows and understand what's going on over there. Let's cover the email agent first. So it will receive all the details from the main AI agent, like whom to send it, the attendees, whom to put it in CC, BCC, uh, the contents, what should be the contents of email, etc. And this agent has only one responsibility, which is to execute the email related tasks. So these are the core responsibilities we have given to this agent. Read email, send email, reply or forward, draft, apply, search and summarize content. And we have defined some sequential operation guidelines where there are some dependencies. For example, for labeling an email, we need the email's ID first. To reply or forward, we need the original email first. And if we want to search, then we need some valid query for parameters. So it will take care of this serial execution to fulfill the task. And it has only one tool, which is MCP client. Now, if you don't know what MCP client and server is, I highly recommend watching this video to get a full clarity on it. In a nutshell, the way it works is in the beginning itself, this agent will fetch all the available tools 
by making a call to this SSC endpoint that we have given in the MCP client. So it will fetch the list of tools which are available and then it can make decision on which tool to call but all of that invocation will happen through this MCP client and MCP server route. Let's look at the emails MCP server. So we have this separate workflow with all the MCP servers we are using in our AI assistant. So there are three MCP servers. The first one is the Gmail MCP server. Uh, the second is Airtable MCP server and the third is Calendar MCP server. In the Gmail MCP server, we have given all of these tools. Send email, email reply, get emails, create draft, get labels, label emails and mark unread. In the Airtable MCP server, we have given the tools get, search, update, delete and create. And in the Calendar MCP server, we have given the tools update event, delete event, get event, create event and create event with attendee. Now this is the Gmail MCP server that we are using in the email agent. So when the server is called, it will first return all of these available tools and later on the agent can invoke any of these tools through the MCP server. Next, let's take a look at the calendar agent. And this is also a very simple agent and its sole responsibility is to execute tasks related to the calendar and it also has access to the calendar MCP server that we just talked about. Next, let's talk about the note taking agent. This is also a very simple agent and it has the responsibility of saving the notes and fetching the notes from the A table. And that's it. We have given two tools to it for that purpose and it will directly interact with the A table. Next, let's talk about reminders agent. This is also a simple agent with access to MCP client and this MCP client is calling the A tables MCP server. It will fetch all the A table related tools that we have given in that server and make them available for use for this reminders agent. This agent has simple instructions on its responsibilities. We have given all the tools which are available to it. And then there are some operational guidelines, time handling and dynamic schema adaption. And then there are some operational guidelines and example responses. Next, let's talk about the send reminders workflow. Now the way reminders functionality works is that when user asks to be reminded about something, this agent will create a reminder and save it in the reminders table. For example, this was one of the reminder that we created in our demo to take laptop charger. So this is a reminder to take my laptop charger with me before leaving for office and this is the schedule time it will be triggered at 9 50. now once this is created we have another workflow which is send reminders and it is scheduled to run every five minutes and from the air table it will fetch all the reminders which are due in the next 15 minutes and then it will loop over all of those items and then send the reminder on whatsapp you can send it on the telegram as well and then it will move on to the next one and then it will process all the elements like that next we have the research agent so this agent has the responsibility of receiving a topic and and doing web searches for it. Then summarize the findings, prepare a report and then return it back. And it has access to Tavli to be able to search the web. You can create a free account on Tavli and then you can pay as you go. This is a good option to give internet access to your agents. And finally, let's take a look at the make calls workflow. Now here we have two different flows. The first flow is triggered by the main AI agent to make a call. And the purpose of this flow is to just save the contact number and the purpose of the call in the AI table. So once it receives the query in the AI table node, it will save the phone and the notes. Notes contains the information on what's the purpose of the call and what needs to be conveyed. So for example, here in the notes, we got let Alex know that he'll need to drive the meeting with Green Estates representative, etc. So after saving it, it will initiate the call by making a post HTTP call to 11 labs and in the fields, we need to pass the agent ID, agent phone number ID and the two number. Now, once this call is initiated by the 11 labs, just before the call starts, 11 labs will call this webhook. And the reason for doing this is to inject the contacts name so that the call is personalized and the purpose of the call that we saved in the AI table earlier. So when this webhook is triggered, we'll first get the calls purpose from this AI table. So we will fetch the notes and the phone number that we saved over here. Then in the next node, we'll fetch all the details for that contact from the contacts table by using using that phone number. So this is the called phone number and then we will remove it from the pending calls table. So we'll remove it from this pending calls so that we don't have stale data over here. And finally, we'll respond back to the webhook with all of these dynamic variables, the name, phone number, and this is the sub prompt. So we will inject all of these values dynamically inside the prompt of our 11 labs agent. Now let's take a look at how to set everything up in 11 labs. So you can create a free account on 11 labs and you will probably get, I think $5 of free credit to begin with. Then go to agents in the conversational AI and then create your new agent. I have already created this agent and this is the first message that we have given. Of course, we can change it, make it more dynamic by using more dynamic variables. And then this is the system prompt. We have given a very simple call structure to it just for demonstration purpose. Give a clear statement of why you're calling and then say that you have message from John for the called user and then deliver this message. 
message and after the user acknowledges say thank you and disconnect and all of these curly braces things that you see over here these are dynamic variables that we are sending from our Anytime workflows now to be able to inject these dynamic variables into your call you need to go to the security tab at the top then scroll down and then enable this fetch initiation client data from webhook and then here you need to paste the webhook url of your Anytime workflow so in this workflow this is the webhook node that we are using and we need to copy this production url then go back to 11 labs and then paste that url over here now what this will do is whenever a new call is started it will first call this webhook and it will use the response it gets from this webhook to extract the dynamic variables and you need to make sure that you are returning the response exactly in this format it's because if you go to this 11 labs docs and scroll down in this twilio personalization section you'll find this json object and your response has to exactly match this format you can define all of your dynamic variables inside this json object called dynamic variables there are some additional settings that you can tweak but we have skipped that for now you don't need to get your business number approved to be able to use WhatsApp business API. You can just rely on the test number that we connected initially. And Meta doesn't charge anything for the user initiated conversations. And since you are acting as the user in this case, your 24 hours window starts from every message that you send. And then this AI agent can keep responding back to you within 24 hours window without getting charged. And that's how you can use it completely for free. You now have your AI assistant ready that will save you hours of work. And let's be honest, a bit of sanity every day. You can use these these workflows as a starting point for your requirement and you can build on top of these. You can add more instructions, maybe improve the prompts so that they perform even better. But this will give you a really good head start. And if you have any questions, drop them below and I'll try to answer all of them. And if you are ready to level up, don't forget to subscribe the channel for more content like this. And thanks for watching and see you in the next one.